you know, I'm 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 content. I'm relaxed. I'm I'm okay. I have a good flow of life. I mean, do you know what I mean? And they're like, yeah, I get what you're saying. You're on Valium. <laughs> <laughs> Happiness is indeed quite a vague word, and it's worth reflecting on what we mean when we talk about a person being happy or enjoying a happy life. As Michael points out, it's not the zippity doo da life of constant pleasure or ecstasy, nor does it mean the possession of those things that he's just talked about before, having tons of money in your bank account or lots of possessions, having a beautiful or handsome spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend on your arm, a relationship that you can point to, nor uh, signs of external success, being given awards, being invited to the right parties. Those are all things that can make a person feel happy in one sense, but for a philosopher, depending on what kind of philosophy they, they're working with, that may have very little to do with the nature of true or genuine or we might call it deeper happiness. Consider for a moment how Michael describes his own state when he's responding to this imaginary interlocutor or friend who says, well, are you happy? He says, I'm content. I'm relaxed, I'm okay, I have a good flow of life, and of course his friend immediately says, oh, so you're taking antidepressants. But what he's talking about there is what the Stoic philosophers back in ancient Greece thought we ought to aim for, and they weren't the only ones. This is something that we see in other philosophical schools as well. This notion that happiness in a, a truer sense, in a more fulfilling sense, involves less what we do have and more what we're freed from. Being content means being freed from all sorts of troubles. Being relaxed allows us to respond to situations. We're not overcommitted because of all the things that we think that we are uh, possessing that, that are good for us, which may not actually turn out to be good for us. And to have a good flow of life, whether on your own or in your interactions with your environment or how you engage with other people, that is something that can be very pleasurable but there's a more uh, fulfilling sense to that as well that goes beyond mere pleasure. When Michael, for instance, is practicing his craft, which is telling jokes that he has originated and then worked on and tried out in front of audiences and then honed a bit more going before another audience, that's one place where that flow could be taking place. The fact that in our culture we tend to associate those sorts of sentiments with something like antidepressants, with chemical modifiers of our brain state that you might say even us out. That's a sign that our culture misunderstands something that Stoic philosophy knew very well and taught about.